afternoon, everybody. I'm Shannon Hayes from Southbush Hollow Farm, where we aim to nourish and restore family, community, and planet. And today I'm getting ready for Sapbush Saturday, and I'm making one of our family's favorite comfort foods, which is shepherd's pie. Now, in order to appease my family, we're going to make an extra shepherd's pie for ourselves and bring it home to cook tonight. That's also to let you see what it looks like when it's totally done, because I'm only going to partially prepare the other ones and then finish them in the cafe Saturday morning. The trick to making a shepherd's pie taste really good is to make sure that the vegetables and meat are all cooking to the same level of doneness. I don't know if you've ever had a shepherd's pie where you go in and the potatoes are great and the beef is great, but you get a really hard carrot and a squeaky green bean. You don't want that happening. What we do is we pre-cook all the vegetables so that they're all at a crisp, tender state before we put them in the casserole to bake. So the carrots have been going for quite a while now. They're just about at that state. The celery here is almost ready. And the onions, I'm just sweating down and I'll keep them going until they're clear. I'll also be adding green beans, but I'm going to be using frozen green beans uh, from the summer. And because those green beans were blanched before they were frozen, I don't need to do anything to prepare those. Some other vegetables that you might want to add to your shepherd's pie are corn and peas. Um, some people like lima beans. You can do all different things. It's a great way to put a whole lot of vegetables and meat together. To make a shepherd's pie come out really well, you need several things going at once. We're sauteing the vegetables over here, but before we even started that, you can see that I started boiling potatoes. We're going to be mashing them in a little while for the topping. So I'm working today with three oven-proof eight-quart casserole dishes. Um, that's because I need two shepherd's pies for the cafe, one for my family. If you don't have three oven-proof casseroles to do all this sauteing really quickly at home, it's no big deal. Just use one and work in small patch batches. Look at the amount of vegetables I have in an eight-quart oven-proof casserole here. If you're gonna saute them ahead of time, which you should, just don't make it any more crowded than that. Work in batches. One of the most important ingredients when cooking with good food is simply time. Be patient, don't rush things. So these carrots are ready, and I'm gonna put them in one bowl here. Okay, those onions are looking perfect. They're ready for the bowl, too. vegetables are now sauteed to a state of crisp tenderness, looking very tasty. First, if watching me cook this is making you really nervous because you don't have a recipe, I do have one on page 83 of Long Way on a Little that you can refer to on your own. I'm probably doing some things differently than they say in the recipe because every time I cook I do things differently. Sorry if that confuses you, but I know the recipe works because we tested it. Before I start the ground beef, I'm gonna add the green beans to this vegetable mix so I have a sense of just how much volume I'm working with. Okay, and now we're gonna start with the beef. I really believe in using fat generously when I'm cooking. Pork fat is high in vitamins A, D, E, and K. Those are all really important nutrients to be getting in the middle of the winter when there's not a lot of sunlight. And people's diets are too low in fat anyhow. Okay. My skillets are all set to the same temperature. On a scale of one to 10, I have all of them set to a seven, so a medium hot level. And now I'm gonna start searing the beef. And these are roughly one pound packages, but I'm only going to add one half pound per pan that I'm working in because I want lots of space around this beef. This is my way of making sure that I get nice browning ahead of time because there's lots of space, lots of places for the extra moisture to evaporate so the meat doesn't get steamy and gray and icky. Okay, this beef has all been searing for about 90 seconds and I want to call your attention to something. So, I made it an aesthetic choice when searing this meat. As you can see, I left it in big chunks. I didn't smash it down into little bits. 
that's because I have a preference when I'm eating a shepherd's pie. I want to get a full bite of meat. I don't want little tiny bits of ground beef just dissolving into the gravy. So as I turn this stuff over, I'm looking to make sure I keep that in some semblance of a real chunk so you get some texture. Okay, so doing this half pound of meat, it took me about uh, two and a half minutes to get that seared. And so I'm gonna empty this out into my bowl with the vegetables and then start the next half pound of beef going in it. So now we have all the vegetables and all the seared ground beef in here. And you see I've got these nice big chunks, which is what I'm after when I'm cooking a beef dish. Now I'm gonna salt and pepper it. I've told you before, thyme is your most important seasonings and then salt and pepper is all we're gonna need for this. And if you're making just one batch at home with two pounds of ground beef, you only really need one and a half teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. But I have it that multiplied by three because I'm making three today. Where's my gravy? Give me my gravy. Okay, the best part of shepherd's pie is the gravy, especially if you're using bone broth. It's so yummy. And if you look here, if you're a dishwasher, you're probably wincing because these look like horribly dirty dishes. But I look at them as a cook and I go, oh, that gravy, when I simmer that broth in there, is gonna taste so good with all the little brown bits in there. So the way I'm gonna start with the gravy is add a couple tablespoons of my delicious pork fat. And again, if you don't have lard like this at home, use butter. Okay, if you've read my cookbooks, you've seen me give uh, gravy recipes using flour, using arrowroot, using almond flour. These days, my favorite thickener for gravy is potato flour. It blends with the broth so well, and it makes a much more consistent flavored gravy. And I've got about two tablespoons of um, lard in my pot here, and it's already melted and bubbling, as you can see. And I'm starting with a third of a cup of potato flour. And I know everyone wants a precise gravy recipe, but you, it really works better if you use your eyes. So roughly two tablespoons of fat, and that's a third of a cup to start. But I want to keep adding potato flour and whisking it into the fat until I get a paste. And how pasty I make it is really depending on how thick of a gravy I want. I want a slightly thicker gravy for this shepherd's pie so that it holds up well in the pan when we serve it in the cafe. So I'm thinking that's looking pretty nice right there. And I'm going to continue to cook it on the stove here until it has browned. As I'm doing this, I'm gently scraping up the browned bits from when we sauteed the vegetables and meats beforehand. So that's all adding flavor to the base. Okay, that's a nice brown color. Now I'm gonna start by adding the bone broth and I'm gonna whisk it in slowly so that it has time, that the potato flour roux has time to absorb the broth, a little bit at a time. Sometimes if you add all the broth at once, it ends up turning to soup. Now remember, again, my goal this time is a thicker gravy so that it's easier for us to spoon into people's bowls on Sapbush Saturday when we serve it. So this is gonna be thicker than what I might pour over uh, chicken, for example, a roast chicken. Look at that. It's such a magical thing to see that come to. And another cool thing about working gravy with potato flour is as it cools, it gets even thicker still. So that's all ready. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. And now that is ready for me to add the shepherd's pie filling. So now we have everything ready. We have 
the center of the pie, the meat and the vegetables, we have the bone broth gravy, and we have a batch of mashed potatoes. I didn't demonstrate that for you because I'm hoping you can make your own mashed potatoes at home. You will notice that we left the skin on the potatoes. I am a big believer in that because the, a lot of the nutrients in the potato are closest to the skin, so I do not believe in peeling potatoes before I mash them. So all we're gonna do, the gravy is sitting here already in the Dutch oven. I'm going to fill the pot two thirds of the way with this filling. I've got this filled two thirds full. I'm just gonna stir it in with the gravy. I'm gonna put the potatoes on top and they're gonna float right on the surface. And I just smooth it out so it's even over the whole casserole. And then this one is going to go in the oven for tonight. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. And then I'm going to bake it at 350 degrees for one hour uncovered. So it's been an hour, we've got some browning on the top, and it's nice and bubbly, and that's the shepherd's pie we're going to feast on for supper. Okay, so if you want to taste some yourself, be sure to come and see us on Sapbush Saturday. I'll make you coffee. And I'll serve you.